Welcome back to the weekly vlog. Actually, this week is going to be just a little bit different because I took the week off. Well, I didn't really take the week off, but in order to bring you the weekly vlog every single week, I have to actively remember to pick up a camera and record something I'm doing every single day, which honestly in the beginning didn't sound that hard. Weeks into it, 20, how many weeks are we into this? 25 weeks or something like that. Um, it became a little bit more difficult. So this week, I actually didn't pick up a camera except for to make the Wednesday video uh, at all, all week, it was kind of nice. Uh, I did do a little filming with my camera, with my phone and that kind of stuff. But other than that, I didn't pick up a camera with the intent of making a weekly vlog. In fact, I wasn't even gonna make a weekly vlog this week and I was just gonna let Sunday roll by without there being anything on the Rwyming Life channel. Being Super Bowl, you know, I figured, hey, who's gonna miss it? But Aaron said, hey, we should probably put something out or else somebody's gonna send you an email or a message on Facebook or whatever and worry if you fell in a ditch and died or something. So we decided to go with what I'm going to do today. And rather than a daily vlog, today we're actually doing a day vlog. You get to follow me around for the entire day and take a look at what a Saturday looks like on the ranch. Bean's ready to go to work. Come on, Bean. There you go. <laughs> it's not a half bad morning this morning. I think it's uh, right around 20 degrees outside, a little chilly, but, but not horrible. Um, we have chores to do this morning, uh, some odds and ends projects throughout the day. Uh, kids have to go to ice skating, but I think Aaron's gonna take care of that. Um, obviously, Valentine's Day is on Monday, so, I think we'll be helping the kids with some Valentine's, you know, just kind of little stuff that's going on. So uh, it's been a pretty stressful time here on the ranch, as you can only imagine. And uh, being able to get out and kind of do my thing really does help with that. So my mornings usually start with heading over to the, uh, to the goats and letting them out for the day. So we're gonna go do that. Come on, Bean. The other crazy thing about the weekly vlog is uh, Eventually, I have this theory that you will have seen it all. Um, <laughs> when I make a weekly video, I can kind of pick and choose what I'm going to make that video about. Um, the weekly vlog, I don't get a whole lot of choice with that because there are certain things that have to be done every single day, and I have to do those, and if I have to film them, I have to film them. So not every day on the ranch is... Uh, life and death situation or something new or tragic or or anything like that but it does remind me of something else that's going on over here that is new and tragic so life and death I guess this is where we're going to get into it but first we're going to let out the goats which is not life or death and uh, get them out for the morning hey goats come on kids come on Come on, everybody out. Come on out. Hey, you know, come on. How are you doing, huh? Okay. <laughs> All right, life and death. This is the, uh, the part that really matters. Um, if you remember, Last year, we had an unwelcome visitor here on the ranch that uh, decided as he was my, he or she was migrating through that our chicken house became a buffet. And that was a bald eagle that uh, kind of camped out here for a few days and pretty much ate everything that he could get his little talons into. Well, he is back. Aaron spotted him yesterday. I have not seen him yet today but that causes a little bit of a problem over here with the chickens. So instead of letting the chickens out um, to free range, like we usually do, we're actually gonna let them out into the enclosure, uh, which we call the chicken run, and uh, lock them in there 
for the day. That causes a few little problems. Um, we have to get them food and we have to make sure they have water. So let's uh, dig right in here. Here's an interesting thing. The, uh, the freeze miser that we use to keep our water from freezing actually creates a little river that runs through here out into uh, one of the hay fields, which isn't bad. Um, but it's a great source of water for the chickens. Unfortunately, it's on the wrong side of the chicken run. The chicken run is a shared fence here with the goats. Hey, goats. We're gonna have some neighbors. You guys are gonna have some neighbors for a little while. Yeah. I haven't opened this up in a while, so hopefully I can get this door open. Oh, there we go. And this one I've got, you just stick the screwdriver through there and it keeps it open. Also, when it's closed, you can stick the screwdriver in and it keeps it locked. So the chickens haven't come out this way in a long time, so I'm sure they're rather confused, but eventually they'll work their way out here. We'll come back and check on them in a little while and make sure there isn't a, a bald eagle sitting on top of this thing. There we go, door is closed. Okay, for food, um, normally, you know, I have these 200 pound chicken feeders that I built, um, they're frozen down. So we're just gonna have to take buckets of food, throw it in there for them. All right, next stop, we're over here at the steers, get their water turned on, check their food, and see how they're doing. We actually have um, three different groups of steers going right now. We have what we call the A team, the B team, and the C team. The A team are over here in the AeroQuip corrals. Um, they're gonna be ready to go within a couple months. The B team, they're four or five months out. And then the C team, well, that's the rest of the steers. And we'll get to see those guys a little bit later. Right now, the A team requires our attention. What did you guys do? So normally they have basic free run of the entire AeroQuip system. Um, they got themselves locked in one corral here, or at least three of them did. The other one's out. Right there. All right, that should keep them moving through here. We're gonna turn on their water for a little while. Make sure they're okay with that. There we go. <laughs> Next stop this morning, we'll go over and take a look at the pigs and see how they're doing. We're gonna actually feed them today a little bit later than we normally would because we're giving them some scraps from the garden that we've kind of been rationing out the entire winter to this point. So, hey guys, Matt will be back over later. He'll bring you guys grain. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna take uh, some scraps that we've been saving for a while uh, into the pigs here a little bit later on this afternoon, but we can run on down and take a look see how they're doing. They're probably all still asleep. Pig, 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 pig. Pig, pig. Come on, piggers. Let's go, piggies. Wakey, wakey. I think some are sleeping in. All right. That's right. I did say that Matt is going to be getting the uh, steers their grain. He has his own list of chores. We're gonna catch up with him here a little bit. Matt, a good friend of mine from Chicago who is here visiting the ranch for a while and living his best life in Wyoming. It's time for us to go out and feed something. We're gonna go out and feed the cows. I've actually already loaded up a bale for them. This is about a 900, 800, 900 pound bale of an alfalfa mix that we got out of North Dakota, I do believe. A little bit left over from um, feeding our calves this fall after we weaned them off. So trying to use some of this stuff up. So 
I am going to cut the strings off of it and then we'll go out and uh, get it fed to the cows. It's gonna fall on me. I can feed round bales or I can feed square bales. It is a little bit of a learning curve to it, but it is very nice that I can do both. All right, so those uh, strings are actually stuck underneath the bale. So one, another nice thing is it has a little bar here I can tie this string off to, and then when I feed the bale, the string will stay here. It's actually pretty handy if you feed anything with strings. Hey, Bean! Come on! Come on! Come on! Oh crap, I forgot to unplug. Let me go unplug it. Unplugged. I don't know about you, but that's one of the, you know, I've got to plug in the tractors, especially if they're not in a heated shop, but um, I always forget to unplug them and then I'm pulling an extension cord halfway across the yard, or worse yet, breaking an extension cord. But I do have good news on that front. I'm actually starting to work with a company called VoltSafe, and uh, we are working on a high wattage, basically a magnetic connector um, so that you can Plug in your tractor or whatever it may be and if you forget to unplug it not a big deal it just pulls apart kind of a cool piece of technology it's a little ways off yet but we are working on it and I hope to be able to, to tell you more about it here in the next few months anyway all right let's go feed our cows out to get something to eat. All right, our square bale distributed somewhat evenly in our strings still hanging on the Hustler, which we have to go and clean off at some point, along with a little net, little bit of net wrap that got wrapped around the, the rotor there over the last couple days. All right, cows look good. Grabbing a bite to eat, a little bit of breakfast. Next thing coming up for the cows is actually Bang's vaccination. Uh, which is a vaccination for, for uh, brucelliosis, which is a disease they can actually get and kill calves and all kinds of bad things happen. Um, it's more common actually with elk than anything, but it has been known to spread throughout Wyoming. So we vaccinate all of our heifers uh, for brucelliosis. That'll come up sometime in April, I'm guessing. It actually has to be done by a vet and they have to come out and do it because they have to have records of it. So once I get that scheduled, I'll get that figured out. At that time, we'll actually separate off the heifers from the rest of the breeding cows uh, as they're gonna get a different bull, which I still have to find. Um, I've got a few uh, feelers out there for some bulls, but we'll get that figured out also as we move through the spring here. It is nice to, to have some nice weather and be able to do some things, but at the same time, I wish that we were getting, you know, a couple feet of snow and some storms around this time. Some, some uh, blizzards would even be nice, get some moisture on the ground, but it is what it is. We're going to have to deal with it, cope with it. When we are going through everything that we're going through here on the ranch with changing our, 
our business plan and everything else that we're doing. It would be nice if the weather cooperated. It would be really nice if the weather cooperated, but it's not. And uh, that that's part of that stress that's uh, that's kind of got everybody a little bit on edge. But honestly, I mean, there's no no place else I'd rather be. So if a little bit of stress comes along with it, we'll deal with that. Besides, I got one of the best cubicles in the world, so can't complain. All right, park this thing. You ready to go, Bean? Come on, you did really good. I'm gonna get this tractor plugged back in. There we go. Hey, I just heard your friend out here. Come on, let's go. Who's here? Who's here? Boom. Morning, Matt. Morning, Mike, how are you? I'm good. Oh, does she usually you try to eat it? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Her. No, of course not. That's a little weird though, Doug. Do you like that stuff? It's like cereal. Oh, I never thought about that. You're right, it is. You gonna get big and fat? Like a steer? <laughs> How are you this morning? Not bad. Good. Not bad. So this is Matt. Matt is a friend of mine from Chicago, Illinois. You might have seen him already on the channel. Um, he is in charge of steers. Chickens, steers, and chickens. Yeah, pretty much. Everything goes with chickens. And... Right. Um, so this morning, I let the chickens out in the chicken run, which okay. is uh, that you know because of this eagle issue. Yeah. So we do need to grab a couple buckets for them of food to put inside the chicken run, so they have food for the day. Okay. Okay. Just and then... get it on the run. Yep. Okay. Exactly. Second like bucket flows good. Yeah. There it goes. Matt, do you mind if we tag along with you this morning? No, not one, one bit. Okay. Does she usually ride in the back? No, she usually rides in front. It's you cold up here. Okay, fine. Come on, Bean. First stop uh, is going to be the Sears. Okay. The A-team is ready for you. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to have to come up with something different uh, for the way that we feed these guys. And we're kind of looking at more of a feedlot style feeder where we actually feed them outside the fence, let them stick their heads through. That's coming up on an upcoming project here, so. Yeah, good morning. Come on, Bean. Bean's ready to do something. Yeah. She keeps uh, the stairs at bay. Ah. Bean, come here. Come here, Bean. Help us out. Come on, Bean. Come on. What, well, they're ignoring you, Bean? So basically, whatever one they're the most at, I feed them the opposite one. Hey, B, you got something stuck in your mouth? Some grain stuck in there? You okay? All right, for those of you who don't know, my friend Matt here has MS, which uh, doesn't slow him down too much, but he does have a cane that he has to get around with. So um, I am glad that you're able to do the chores you can do. And it, for Matt, it's really become more of a proving to himself that he can do whatever he needs to do. 
which is something that we pretty much preach all the time. It's always, you know, if you're if you're thinking about doing something, just just do it. I should have worked for Nike, but I mean that's kind of our philosophy. So if you can do it, get it done. Matt does that every single day out here on the ranch. Basically, MS is just one of those conditions, diseases, whatever you want to call it. I call it condition that makes uh, you have good days and you have bad days. Some When you have a bad day, it's bad. When you have a good day, it sucks. So you can't, you can't win. All right, Matt, where are we off to next? Well, we're off to get the chickens uh, situated. Oh, yeah, let's grab eggs, grab their food, and get eggs, right? Yes. Okay. Be interesting to see how many came out in the chicken run because I opened it and they all said, "What, what, what, what's going on? Why are we going out the back door? What do we do?" My understanding is chickens are very uh, temperamental. They don't Isn't like change. everybody. Oh. You got to think about it. It's a, it's a, it's a house full of women. Oh, don't get me started. <laughs> Last time I made comment about hair color and stuff, I took a lot of heat. Oh my gosh. Here's and a that was just from my wife. Yeah, well here's the first uh, uh, first time we ever got a chance to sit down with Matt and have a little bit of a conversation was during a live stream that I did from Indiana when I went out to speak at an FFA event out there. And uh, here's what Matt had to say. And this is how Matt introduced himself to the channel. No, I'm uh, not really, but I've been having a blast down here. I've been, when, as the camera goes around, Every woman except one, their hair color is not natural. <laughs> Jeez. Matt's making friends. <laughs> Are you proud of yourself? Well, I thought it was kind of funny. But <laughs> nobody else did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Chicken food. I don't know. There's not much difference to me from uh, COB, uh, chicken food. So COB is basically like the universal feed that we use here on the ranch, and it's the base for everything. Um, this is COB, but it's got some lay pellets mixed into it, some sunflowers, some oyster shells. All that stuff is good for chickens. Uh, oyster shells, uh, calcium for the eggs, and of course the lay pellets uh, are full of vitamins that keep them laying. So. While COB is the base for everything we use, everything's got a little bit uh, of something added to it. So you can see the difference. There's some corn and some bigger, well, this is corn too. Um, lay pellets, these are the lay pellets, these little tiny things you can barely even see. And so this is COB, and this is our chicken food. Just a little bit of difference. That makes all the difference. starting to come out hopefully we don't see any big giant birds on the horizon let's head inside the chicken house and see how Matt's coming out with eggs you're not a chicken have you been pecked yet sometimes yeah Yesterday I was clocking, and when it did, one of the chickens just wouldn't move. Oh, really? Yeah. Finally, got her to move. She wouldn't move because she was laying back. Oh. So it came out all slimy. And... Did you see it get laid? Yeah. See, that's an experience. It was. Yeah. We get to see Yoda every morning. Whoa. Whoa. Hey. Never seen that. Settle before. down. Hello, Yoda. I should come and say hi to you folks. Try to keep my fingers. Here you want to take I'm okay. showing you how my morning goes. All right, we're, well, we're watching it. Hey, Bean, hey, stop licking know. the eggs. So while Bean tries to clean the eggs, it's actually one of your jobs later on today is to wash eggs, correct? Yeah, correct. Yep. We'll show you how Matt washes eggs a little bit later on. Back 
in the gator. Matt's got his eggs. Bean should be somewhere. I don't know where she's at. Oh, there she is. And now we're off to Matt's last chore, outside chore anyway, uh, for today. And that's to feed the B team, which uh, we pretty much made as difficult as possible for Matt at this point anyway. Yeah, we're gonna fix that. Yeah, we're gonna fix that. And for just peace of mind, I drop them off. Uh, hello. Oh. What, 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 what? Okay. And Bambi's here. Oh, so, Bambi. I forgot to close the gate when I came back from feeding. So, we've got Bambi up here. Come here. Come here. Come here. You want to just drive us out? She'll follow us, I think. Okay. Come on, I got cake. Nope. Matt's going to drive. <laughs> Are you giving kisses? She is friendly. She's very friendly. Come on, come on. Come on. Hey, Bambi, come on. Come on. Oh, stop, Matt. Come on, Bambi. Come on, girl. All right, now go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on Bambi. She's just circling around behind us. You can stop here. I'll get her. <sighs> Bambi. 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 Where'd you go? Come on, kiddo. Come on. <laughs> Bean decided to help. There you go. Oh, yeah, it's so good. Bean, stop helping. <laughs> Sorry, kiddo. Okay. You're good. <laughs> Come on, Bean. All right. She looks upset. She's mad. Cranky. I'm still smarter than a cow. I never make that claim. <laughs> Oh, there he is, the eagle. You can't see him. Oh, I see him. You see him, but he, yeah. yep, there he is. So he is here. Oh, hope he stays over there. I know you guys probably couldn't see him on camera, but he was a ways out there. We could see him flying around. So it wasn't an eagle, it was like a Cessna or something. Yeah, yeah. it was big. Big, big, big. Okay. Now we okay. can usually someone will be poking their head up wondering what's going on. Well, here's the B team. They've got some hay left down there, so they're okay. But they're really here for this guy. It brings them their morning goodies. beans in there with them. <laughs> well, that's pretty much our morning. Um, I was just say, thus completes Matt's morning routine. Exactly. Uh, we're gonna go get some breakfast. Matt, what's the what's your favorite part about the the morning routine? Do you have a favorite? Well, the reward now will be a breakfast burrito, my uh, coffee drink. <laughs> that's your reward. Yeah. And that's your favorite part. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. Alrighty guys, we're gonna take a little break, get some breakfast, and we'll be back out in, a, uh, what, two shakes of a lamb's tail? Yeah. Alright, whatever that is. Do you like lamb's tails?
Hey there, gang. Welcome back. Uh, we have a special guest on the way, a couple special guests. They are the tenants uh, this week in the Airbnb, which is located right here on the ranch that you can rent uh, pretty much anytime through Airbnb.com. Just search for our Wyoming Life and check out the description below for the link. Uh, Tanya and Tony are from, Wisc uh, they're from Minnesota, and they are here for their 24th wedding anniversary they're on their way over to take a look and get a little tour of the place so i figured uh what the heck we'd bring you along all right so this is tanya and this is tony no Something i'm sorry like it's the other way around <laughs> uh your 24th wedding anniversary and you guys decided to come and spend it in cold and dreary wyoming I mean, you could have went well, to florida well it was Cold and dreary in Minnesota, so <laughs> six of one, half a dozen of another. Exactly, and the whole last 24, no, we won't go there. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, we decided that we today we were going to give you a little bit of a look around. Now, you're a farmer in Minnesota, yep. and you run cows just like we do. Different yep. breed of cows, but yep. Minnesota cows with the weird accent. Yeah. Yeah. You betcha. You betcha. <laughs> uh, hey there, hi there, ho there. Okay, so uh, we are going to take a look at the Hustler, uh, the feeder. You want to take a look at that? You want to take a look at the AeroQuip system? Absolutely. Anything you want to see, Tanya, while you're over here? Just animals. Animals? We got goats. I can show you goats. And I got chickens that are all penned in because we got a bald eagle flying around. Okay. Oh. So, yeah. Transfer. Let's go take a look. Okay. okay. Do you do a lot of uh, a lot of bale feeding or are you using small bales or what are you using? We use, uh, we use rounds to the feed through pen. Oh, okay. And we'd like to move out um, to where we put the hay out on the, out on the fields. Oh, okay. That works. That was kind of what we... I saw this on your on your YouTube and uh, want to take a look at it because it, the ones that we have, Hustlers and is in our area, but the ones we have shred everything. Oh, really? Where this one leaves it full length. Yeah, this thing's really nice because it just leaves a, a windrow just like before you bailed it. I mean, mm -hmm. it fluffs it up. And, you can leave a windrow, you know, this tall if you wanted to. So yeah, feel free to take those, a look. Those will, those will, it'll windrow, but it won't. Uh, it, it shreds everything. Oh okay. So. Yeah, this thing, it just rolls it off nice and easy. Um, I've got a bunch of net wrap and crap wrapped around the rotor right now. You're gonna, you're gonna. Yeah, there's no way to get around it really. And then it has this really handy uh, beer cooler in the front. Yeah. Yeah. So there we go. I put net wrap in my beer cooler, but you can put whatever you want. In there. <laughs> I like how you can do. You can take two bales at once. Yeah, yeah, and the nice thing is with the uh, with the tractor, I can carry three. Yep. If I put one on the front, got one in here, and then you can actually you don't have to take the net wrap off. You can just kick it out the side too if you just want to transport. You okay. just roll the table up, and it just rolls it right off the side for you. No, yeah, we watched watched as you you know take it out in the field, and it seems to work really well. Yeah, no, it works great for what it is. I mean, for a light little piece of equipment, I mean. You'd be surprised how, how heavy duty it is. And the engineering that goes into it, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen this thing flip all the way around and do its whole thing. It's kind of yep. a, a piece of work and in, in how it works and we like it. How many horsepower does it take usually? I, you know what, honestly, it runs on off your hydraulic. Oh, so as yeah. long as you've got a hydraulic on your tractor, it should run. Yep. Um, it, it doesn't even care about that, the horsepower at all. These are 95 horsepower machines, but um, I haven't had any yeah, trouble with them at all. Now, when you're, when you're cold, and your hydraulic fluid's cold, sometimes it just doesn't want to go. go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah. other than that, I mean, I yeah, let we, things warm up a little bit. We know about cold because uh, we just, it was 42 below wind chills this morning at home. Oh, see, oh man, you got it. This is, this is Florida. Yeah, we're <laughs> looking for our shorts. And then over here is the arrow quip. So I watched it all, I watched as you set it all up and everything and uh, thought, him, hey, this. No. I made that look way easier than what it was. Oh, I can understand. Yeah. This, thank God for skid steers. So, yep. otherwise I never would have got it done. So we've got steers in here now, and we're finishing these guys out. They've got a couple months left. Okay. And then the other steers are over by you guys. We met. Yeah. Oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're a little uh, a little needy. Well, they're, they're under a lot of stress, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they've got it, they've got it hard. Yep. Oh. So this is our loading chute, obviously. Will that, will that go into semis? Yep, it goes all the way right up, up to about five foot. Okay. Pretty close to five foot. I did back into it with the tractor and dented the crap out of it, but the tub is nice, obviously, to bring stuff in and be able to push it wherever you need it to go. You can leave that open. Yeah. yeah. Bring them. And then they come up through this way and they always want to turn back. 
Yep. So it's it's constantly, you know, it's like an S curve all the way through. And we really don't have that many problems with them getting too clogged up. The calves are a little rougher just because they're dumb. Yeah. But, you know, once they've been through it a couple times, they really do figure it out. And then, of course, the, uh, the squeeze chute is pretty... This one's really nice. I like this one a lot. Yep. See, this is what I like here. You can have one in mm -hmm. and then open, run it down, and then you've got all your controls right right here. Yep, exactly. This thing, this this controls your head, your head gate, but you can slide it pretty much anywhere you want. Oh, wow. So as you're, you know, if you want to work them from up here or back there, the only thing is you have to watch out because that'll knock you on the head pretty quick. But, you know, and then this is your squeeze. And you're more than welcome to run it all you want. It's a little dirty because it's got a bunch of gunk in it. Yeah. That's your squeeze there. And then the dock can get in here too. Yep. It's, oh, you got panels everywhere where you can get in. Um, you, know, you got this side. This whole part comes out. So you can get right in on the oh. sides. And also, I mean, if you really want to get creative, you can open up the whole, the whole part here. Why is it not opening? Oh. Safety. Yeah, safety. So you can open up that side. You can open up the bottom part. You can get you know, hooves. Both sides. Yep, on both sides. Wow. So there's there's 4,000 ways to get in and out of it. The other really cool thing about this system, because AeroQuip just started doing all the panels and everything else. Yep. They've done the panels in Australia for quite a while. But this little octagon here in the middle, so I can bring in 10 cows, whatever calves, and sort into one corral I want to. And they just kind of go around in here and, and then, you can just sort them all off. And you got holding pens. Everywhere, yeah. Yep. Uh, you'd probably chuckle after what you saw. Oh, we do things. Well, I mean, our old corral was just a, you know, a wooden corral, but I've seen, you know, people that use panels for squeeze shoots. You know, if they get a cow up against a, a fence and bring in a panel and you know tie them tie them together you know kind of thing you guys can come on in if you want to Dan, come on. there we go so he's a miniature fainting goat um, he'll faint occasionally the rest of them are dwarf nubians i think and then Yoda over there, she's a alpine. We eat animals. I know, right? They're very loving. So that's Jack, Waffle, Nick Fancy, Cruella, and Yoda. Yellow, 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 yellow. He doesn't paint on command to uh, come for the kitchen scraps. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, that's where a lot of our garden scraps, everything else goes directly into into pigs. In fact, I'm doing that a little bit later on this afternoon. Got to go pick up bucket loads of squash and old old pumpkins and all kinds of stuff. And these guys will take care of all of it. They'll turn pumpkin into bacon. bacon. And that is a natural dewormer too. That is. Yep, it sure is. I do it in the air. Oh, there's a peacock. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah. You asked yeah. yesterday, you know, how did you find this? What, you know, why did you come here? Because you're, you show the good, the bad, and the ugly of, you know, the ranch life. And it's a little different than our farm life. Right. But not that much different. You yeah. Know, you still got to get up in the morning and whatever weather, you got to go. Yep. Yep. Doesn't matter. And trying sure. to trying to raise a family on, you know, and keep things going, it's quite a life. Yeah, no doubt. I agree. I agree. Well, I'm glad you guys got a chance to come out, hang out, stay in the Airbnb. We still got a couple days left, so. The Airbnb is excellent. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Yes. Comfy. Everything's there. We just had to make a run for food. There you go. There you go. And you yeah. even came over to the farm store and you shopped at the farm store. Yep. yep. So it all worked out. Awesome. Well, thanks, guys. I appreciate it.
Alrighty, uh, we're uh, now what getting later on in the afternoon uh, here on the ranch, and you know having having Tony and uh, Tanya over here uh, from uh, Minnesota, it, it's really kind of cool to meet different farmers and ranchers and from all over the U.S. And of course, um, having them stay on the ranch is kind of a, a really cool way to to bond with them as well. So I appreciate you guys uh, being a part of our video. The pigs really appreciate all the, the, the nummies they got here. And one of the things that I don't show uh, here when we do these day in the life type videos is that almost in between every single little project, I like to duck back in the house, um, especially on the weekends because it gives me a chance to kind of see what the kids are up to and hang out with them for a little bit. So some of the things that you miss, you know, obviously going inside, seeing the kids might play a quick, uh, help them out with a video game or they get me to play a video game or they need, uh, they want to read a book or they want to, they want to hang out uh, just a little bit. Aaron's just the same. Uh, we get a chance to reconnect on the weekends as well. So don't think that the entire weekend is all just work, 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 work. Um, obviously, there's definitely a, a lot of family time that's in there as well. Aaron took the kids to ice skating um, right around noon or so. I didn't get any lunch. I don't think Matt got any lunch. And in fact, I was wondering where Matt was at, but now that I get over here by the shop, um, he's actually hanging out in here in the shop. So let's go down. We'll see what uh, Matt's up to in here and, uh, and then uh, get ready to wrap things up for the day. So let's check it out. Hey, Matt. <laughs> sorry. Oh, sorry. Snuck in on you. What are you doing? Well, I got this idea for, our, since the operation is changing, we're not just feeding the cows. We have steers in a couple locations that get uh, seal meat, okay? Okay. It's more difficult to feed over the fence and get in the thing. We saw that today. Yeah. Yeah. So if we... Had some, uh, we took some of these correct ground, well, I don't know if there's crap, but they're laying around. My idea is to weld a bunch of them, which entailed welding. I don't know how to weld, but I've watched about 10 videos on, you, on uh, YouTube. Guess what? I ain't no welder. <laughs> so, so, you're, so you're practicing? I'm practicing. Seems okay. to be the, no disrespect to anybody who welds for a living. I thought it'd be, how hard could it be? I see it on TV. <laughs> it's a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> I think you're learning that all the way. I would like to think that ranching is a little harder than it looks on TV too, but probably not. No, no, no it's well, harder. It probably is a lot harder. So we're gonna reuse lick barrels. We're repurposing something on the ranch. We're gonna make it work for how we need it to work. And, and Matt's working on that for us. And first he needs to learn how to weld. <laughs> Learn how to weld. Yeah. Okay. We can get there. Um, he's using a Chicago Electric uh, welder. This is actually Jeff's welder. Thank you, Jeff, for allowing us to use it. Yeah, thanks, um, Jeff. If I break it, I'll buy you a new one. <laughs> Good thing is it comes from Harbor Freight. Oh, so even better. Even better. Um, but uh, Jeff is not here on the ranch, obviously. Jeff is still back in California uh, with his family. His wife had some surgery and stuff like that. He definitely wanted to be home uh, during those days. So now you can stop emailing me and, and leaving comments saying, where's Jeff? Jeff is not here, Jeff is in California. We don't know when Jeff is gonna be back, but at some point he will be back, his camper's here. So, yeah. it's just- I might move into it. <laughs> Matt may move into it, yeah, no doubt. Yeah. All right, Matt, do it's why I can't don't let us stop you, Matt. You keep on, uh, keep on keeping on. Thanks. Yeah. I will try. Hopefully this works, because it, when we were at, uh, um, wherever we were at, the co-op or whatever, the, Traps are expensive. They are expensive, yeah. So I can see why you try to make do with what you have and repurpose things. If you're on these are two years, if it if it works. Plus we're cheap. I'm bohemian. We're not cheap. We're frugal. Frugal. That's that's yes. even better. Frugal. So I grabbed the rose said, You're not cheap. You're frugal. <laughs> have fun welding, Matt. Okay. Thank you. Another thing that we like to uh, do out here, and I guess, you know, it's the, it's definitely a perk of being out here, living this lifestyle, um, being able to stop and smell the roses, although there are no roses, but we can stop and just kind of hang out for a little bit. And I thought 
I'll give you guys a chance to do that today. Maybe take a couple minutes and just hang out. So my thought was to just put the camera somewhere and uh, let you guys be a part of that. So there's no cows down here. Cows are out in the pasture right now, but I happen to be hanging out with Matt's friends, the steers. And uh, this is a pretty good place to hang out. The sun is shining and uh, for a while you can be a part of their lives. So I'm gonna set you over here where they're grabbing a bite to eat and let you just hang out with the A-Team for a little while. Don't do that, that's copyrighted. You can't use that. Find another song. Arizona Guardian stucco in the heat let me take you dancing Let me get you on your feet Arizona garden with my little cactus flower Let the day slip away in the golden hour We've got nothing but time and music And a sweet cool drink in the heat Oh, I'll be beside you Every step of the way Right here beside you Every step of the way Prickly pear and a sandy bear Holding you heals me But loving you hurts my head Oh, Arizona gardens in the afternoon No matter what happens It's me and you, baby Nothing but time and music And a sweet cool drink on our feet Step of the way, right here beside you. Every step of the way, every step of the way. Alrighty guys, our day is coming to the end, to the end, to an end somewhat. I mean, our days really never end here on the ranch, but uh, they keep on rolling. We're going to go find what Matt's doing. And in case you were wondering what I've been doing since Matt's been out practicing welding and now whatever he's doing back here in the house, uh, I was dealing with a water line that apparently, apparently exploded underneath our bathroom sink. So I got to replace all that this afternoon. Didn't film a lick of it, uh, but... Uh, it was a it was a lot of fun. 
Alrighty, let's go see what Matt's up to. He's in here in the utility room in the house. Matt, what you doing? Uh, finishing out my chores for a day. Kind of put it off and basically what I'm doing is I clear the day this morning and usually should clean them and uh, box them right away as soon as you can. But anyway, go through the eggs, clean up any poop or debris on them like this and that one looks good no cracks nothing on there that shouldn't be on there what so is this, what is this thing down here it's called the egg scrubber what it does is you take a real nasty egg like this one it's full of poop and everything chickens are really nasty <laughs> you think rinse it off a little bit then turn the scrubber on Thing just rolls around and scrapes the uh, scrubs the poop off. Nice. Does it work pretty well? Yeah, I think it does. And when it doesn't, you just take it, take the egg out of there, and that's what I do anyway. I don't know if you're supposed to or whatever. <laughs> you use a little hand scrub action. Yeah. So that or rub your fingernail on it. There's a scrub brush up there too. If you want to use that. Oh. Not that you have to, but... <laughs> so anyway, there's a little bit of a dark spot. Fresh ants, back Matt. in there for a while. Fresh as they get. That's uh, all I do. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate it. No problem. All right, so that's pretty much it uh, for our day. We've got uh, a terrible light in the background. Hold on, let me move out here. Where there's no light. How about that? A little better. How about we turn this on? There we go. Now we got some light going on. Alrighty, uh, so that's it for our day. I uh, hope you enjoyed kind of following along for an entire Saturday here on the ranch. Uh, dinner on the way. Both both Matt and I missed lunch. Did you get lunch, Matt? No. Yeah. No, we both missed lunch, uh, but uh, I think we've got dinner on the way. Hopefully at some point. Super Bowl is tomorrow, so we're gonna hang out and watch that. And uh, that's pretty much it for for Saturday on the ranch. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time right here on our Wyoming life. Boom! Lights out.